All right, welcome back everybody. In this movie, I wanna talk about how to write custom functions. Now, we've already talked about how to write, how to use built-in functions like that alert function. And why would we wanna make our own? Well, we've written a little script here, which is great. And it just asks the user how many pies they made, how many they ate, totals them out with, you know, by subtracting the eat from pies and so on and so forth. If you want to reuse this code, you would actually have to rewrite all four lines of code every time that you needed to use it. And in a complicated website that probably has a hundred different scripts of things, uh, you don't want to have to reinvent the wheel and waste all that time having to rewrite it every time. You want something that's lightweight. You want uh, JavaScript to be able to process that and use it when you call it. So that's why we would write our own custom function for this. And let me show you how to do that. Much like declaring a variable, you need to write the word function. And then you're going to need to give it a name. So I will call this my, and then let's just say capital function, uh, my function, and then you're going to require the parentheses. And we have established the function now. And before I put the semicolon, we're gonna need two curly braces. And then you can put the semicolon. Now, we've declared the function, we've given it a name. I know it's a function because we've got the parentheses. And then now I've got these curly braces. So I'm gonna put the cursor in there and drop a couple lines. In between the curly braces is where the script goes, okay? So let's just cut and paste that so we don't have to reinvent that wheel there. And let's cut that and let's paste it inside my function. And I'll get rid of some of these blank lines just to clean it up. They're certainly okay to have. I just wanna make it visually more more um, easy to see here. And we have now written a function called my function. I could have called this total pies or whatever, um, but you need to give it a name. And then I just put that script inside that function. Now, every time I call that function, it will do whatever's inside that. It'll process that script. Okay. So now it's important to note that if I open this in the browser right now, it's not going to do anything. So let's go ahead and open that. And you can see, lo and behold, it didn't do a darn thing. That's because I need to trigger that function. I need to call it. And there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, one thing I can do is just write the word my function and just call it like that. Make sure you got the uh, parentheses and a semicolon. And let's go back, refresh the page, and here we are. How many pies? 88. How many did you eat? Uh, 99. And then there are negative 11 pies. Apparently, they were more than I could eat. Um, so anyway, I had to call that function. Now, there are different ways you can call this. Um, I could also put this in what's called an event. An event is basically when something happens and then you can call the function on that event. So for instance, if I go into the body tag, I can use an attribute called onload, O-N-L-O-A-D, equals, in, in quotations, then I'll just put my function, make sure you use the capital F on there, and that's all I need to do. So now what it's saying is when the body loads, it's going to trigger the function, which will be exactly the same as what we saw a second ago. So let's refresh the page. How many did you make? Four, how many did you eat? One, there are three pies left. Okay, so um, the other thing you can do is let's do a different type of event. Let's delete that for a second. Let's add a button in here. And let's just say, uh, let's create a button and say uh, start um, the pie function. Now this is a link. And if I go back over here and refresh, I, there's no link that it goes to, but what I, what I can do on here is after the href, I can give it an onload. Remember the href attribute uh, usually has a web page or some kind of anchor that it's going to go to, so we can't use that to call the function necessarily. Um, a preferable way to do this is say on click, on c l i c k equals, and then let's put the name of the function in there, my function, and then parentheses, and we're done. So now when I come over here, let's start the pi function, and it starts the pie function. How many did you make? Four. How many did you eat? Two. There's two left. All right, so that is basically, we've written a custom function, and just because you've written the function doesn't mean it triggers. In fact, you really don't want it to trigger, because if you have 100 functions that just automatically trigger when the page loads, that can be problematic. So by nature, JavaScript makes you call the function. And so we can do that one of several ways. We can just call the function you know, just by calling it in the script. Um, you're probably not gonna use that a whole bunch. Um, more practically, what we can do is we can tie it to an event. And so for instance, we put it in the body, we created an onload event, which was basically when the page loads, and that's what triggers the function. Or you can say, when you click on this link, on click, and we call the function that way. So anyway, those, that's basically how you do a custom function and how you call it.